So, moving on to the feet, I think we'll do next. And then, because the feet, you have to literally make 10 of them. So, um, I'll start you off with the feet, and then you can go ahead and make your 10. And then we can all meet back here and do the antennae. And then put the legs and the feet on and, and all that stuff. So, the feet are very quick and easy because they're just these little balls. The, um, these are the legs. That's just a chain. We're going to go through that. But this is what you're making. you got to make 10 of them. Two for each leg. If yours has got as many lumps as mine does. Um, I'm still using a 5. We're going to do a magic ring and we're going to do 6 single crochets in that magic ring. You're going to do two single crochets in each stitch around. So you can use a stitch marker. Um, I'm just going to count to 12. That's my 12. So you're going to do one single crochet increase for your next round. So at the end of that, it should give you 18 stitches. So that's my one single crochet. And an increase, you should know by now. It's two in the same space. Alright, so your next row is going to be one single crochet and a decrease. Got your one single crochet, so you go right into your decrease. So you can put some stuffing in this because um, your next thing is just going to be uh, six, six decreases. So you want to fill it first. Doesn't take much. So six, six decreases, and then you can sew the rest shut. So this is my sixth one. I don't want to pick up any of that stuffing. So I'll go into your next hole. Slip stitch. You don't need anything to sew anything on. We're going to be chaining the green color we were using for the, or whatever color you're using for the head and the tail. We're going to use that same color to make chains to make the legs and there's not any sewing we're not sewing these on let me show you 
So all I did was make a chain, put a knot at one end, put it through the leg, put it with my, with my needle, put it through the thing, the body, come up the other side, put it through the other leg, tied a knot, jammed it down. That's all I did to get the legs because I wanted the legs like that, right? So there's no sewing involved. And I'll show you the difference between what we did with sewing the balls together on the one that we're working on. This is what I had done before. I had gone through a number of times sewing it and you can see and that's why we did it the way we did it on this one. Oh, sorry, Jesus. I knocked my camera over one of these days. Anyway, so this, back to this, I get rambling. You just need enough to sew the top shut, weave, weave it in so it's not going to come undone on you. Do a knot, jam it down, whatever you want to do. So we're going to go in and out just like we've been doing this whole time. Pull it shut. Now you can make a knot on top if you want. It's not really necessary. And then you can go in and out. Just make sure you're keeping it round. Because you don't need to put a whole lot of stuffing in this, but you do want it to keep a nice round shape. So, that is it. Um, you can cut this off when you're done weaving and make nine more. You need ten all together. I will put the pattern up for you and I will see you on the other side. Alright, so I got all my feet done. So, um, to make the legs, we're going to use the green. Well, you can use whatever color you're using. I'm going to tell you what colors to use. So, whatever colors you're using. It's just a chain. So, for the one that I did... Um, before my prototype I chained 23 so that's 23. You can fasten off with a little bit of a piece. One end needs a really tight knot and one end needs a double knot. So I'm just going to pull this to make sure it's super tight. I'm going to put a double knot on this end. It doesn't matter which one you do, except for when you put it through the legs. So I'm going to put my knot down as close as I can to the chains. So then you take your needle. The part you made a double knot on, you can just drop, and we're going to use the other end here. So thread your needle. You're going to go into the foot on the good side, popping out preferably in the middle, but not super duper important. This is not going to be easy to pull through, by the way. So you're going to pull through just until you're not because you're just you're going to poke that down with scissors. This end we'll do the back. So you want to go as low as you can on as low as you well, I mean midway, little maybe a little below midway on your balls 
and you want to poke that right through. Now some of this might be hard to pull through, but you want to pull through. You can always fix it later. It, we don't want it like that, but we want to add the other ball. So this side is going to, you're going to go down through the crap side and you're going to come out the good side. I want the good sides to be on the outside. So, like I said, because there is a small knot from where you did your slip knot, you're going to probably struggle with some of these. You might have to change where you go in. You might not be able to go... Oh, see, now I'm completely stuck in it. You might not be able to go in completely down that middle piece because it's going to be... You're going to get stuck just like I just got stuck. But find a spot you can go down where you're not going to get stuck. So once you get through, you're going to tie another knot for the top of this. But if you find that your feet are too long, you can also tie the knot in the chain if you don't like the 23 that we did. So ultimately, it's going to look like that, is what it's going to look like. So if you find that that's too long, then you can just alter your knots. You don't have to use all of the 23 chain. Um, I'm going to leave mine like this because that's what I do. I think 23 worked perfectly for every single ball. That's why I used it. And I didn't get I didn't get that knot quite down where the other knot is, so I'm just going to make another knot. So you want to just snip off a little piece and shove that down like we do when we're um, weaving and stuff. So shove that into the filling, polyfill. And we can cut a little bit off of that tail. And we can shove that down in there. And that's your first set of feet. So, you can do that with all your balls. All the way up. And I will meet you back after all our feet are on. And we can do some antennas. So I've got all my legs on now. This is what it should look like. So we're going to do the antenna next. You're going to need two colors. The color of your feet if you want to match. I'll show you my other one. So because I did the feet red, I did the top of the antenna red. And um, so I'm going to do the same for this guy. I did the feet yellow. So I'm going to do the top of the antenna yellow, and then the bottom, the, the green, his head color, or whatever color you're using. So that's what we're going to do next. So let me start with yellow. So start with your tippy top color, whatever color you, you are going to have on top. You're going to make a magic ring of six single crochets. You're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around, or just count to 12.
So that's my 12. For the next two rows, you're going to put one single crochet in each stitch. I'm going to show you a little trick when it comes to changing colors. After this, we're going to change colors. And somehow I lost my stitch marker. So I'm going to do one row and a half and then I'll meet you back here and show you how I change colors to make your life easier. So I'm going to go part way around the second round of one single crochets and then I'm going to add my new color but I'm not adding my new color. I'm going to add my new color but I'm not going to use my new color. That's an e a better way to say it. So I'm about part way around. I'm going to get my new color and I'm going to start weaving it in. So I'm going to weave it in to my yellow stitches. Just like that. This way you only have to do you only have to weave in one piece of yarn and not multiple pieces of yarn. So if you finish that row in yellow. So now I've got that weaved in. So now underneath my stitch marker when I start the next round. Let's tuck that away down there. So these two are what I'm working with. So I'm going to start my next round, which is going to be a decrease round. So I'm going to drop the yellow. I'm going to pick up the green and now I'm going to weave this in for a little bit. Your first, you're going to decrease four times. And then the rest are just going to be regular stitches. So I'm weaving in the yellow now, so I only have to weave in one. So there's my first decrease. And now I'm going to be all green. You do it the other way and you have to weave in two pieces and it's just more difficult. There's my second decrease. Still weaving in the yellow. My third decrease. fourth decrease and then just regular crochets. Now the reason I did that is because I want the antenna to have a certain shape. So now I can cut the yellow off. So for the next seven rounds, you're just going to do one single crochet in each of those should be eight stitches. And then you can fasten off, but don't sew the top shut. We're going to leave the top open. I'm just going to use my row counter. If you don't have a row counter yet, it comes in really, really, really handy. Even though you can count the rows by the color change. I still use my row counter. I don't know why. I'm addicted to this thing. I just put it on my finger. I wear it on my finger. And anytime I do a row, I just click the button. So, anyway, that's number one. So, seven rows, uh, one single crochet in each of these eight stitches, and I will meet you back here. So I've got my other one done and I don't know if you can see the shape, kind of, and kind of got to stuff it like that too. It kind of turns a little bit in which is why I did the decreases 
the four decreases and then just regular stitches because I wanted it to have that shape. My other one has this shape too so when you put them on the head you kind of want to have it so that the two parts that are going this way kind of go in to each other. So I've got mine stuffed the way I want it. That's not my right hook. So I'm just going to go into the next stitch and I'm going to slip stitch and I'm going to fasten off of the sewing tail. So we're not sewing the tops shut. We're going to sew them on just like this. So you're probably going to want some pins. I got these fancy pins. These are wig pins, but I don't see why they wouldn't work. I do a lot of wigs. I do a lot of hair for dolls, so I thought I would just get those. So, like I said, you got to make sure that this part that leans this way, if that's how you stuffed it, I mean that should have been how it was stuffed. And they're going to lean in toward each other. Like that. So once you determine where you put these, then we can do the face, so. Thankfully you can line them up with the, uh, the rows. About one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm on the tenth line right there from the middle. If that helps. So I'm going to sew. Partly show you how I sew on. It, it's very difficult to sew on camera. And that's probably why you don't see a lot in people's videos. Just because it's so difficult. I mean people got to hold stuff the certain way to sew. You know sometimes close to their body and stuff. But I will do my best. I don't sew. Please don't take lessons off of me. I do not sew well. But I'm going to do what's called an invisible stitch. So I'm going to try to zoom in here. So I'm going to go up first to tack it in place. So I'm going to go in as close as I can to this. I'm going to grab the doll, some of the, the head. And then I'm going to come up into the next stitch. So I've got some of the head with, I have to go down into the head. So when you pull, that goes underneath and you won't be able to see the stitch. So again, I'm going to go in as close as I can to the doll. I'm going to come up into the next stitch. So I'm going to go stitch for stitch. I don't know if I can show you on this. I can zoom right in. That's my line. So when you pull, it gets pulled right down and it just it's just going to look like a stitch. It's not going to look like a, sew, a sewing stitch. It's going to look like a crochet stitch. In, in theory, and I have found that this is also a better hold when you, when you stitch stuff on like this. It holds better, especially when you're just going around without sewing it closed. Now you can go down into the doll and pop out somewhere and then go back up. And But this is just a way easier way to... Well, it may not be easy. Easier. But it's the way I like to do it. I've showed in other videos other different ways to do it. So you can go watch some of my other videos if you want to learn different ways. So just make sure you're snugly pulling and make sure that your your bottom's kind of staying open and not trying to close. I might have to pull it out a couple of times. Sorry, I know it's getting harder and harder to show you on my camera. I'm moving too fast around my camera, starting to blur. So 
I'm going to let you go and I'm going to finish sewing this on. I'm going to sew my other one on and then we'll come back and get the face done and that should be about the end of our project. So I got my antenna all on. So let's do the face. I did the face on this guy. This is crocheted. I'll show you how to do this. This here, I don't know if you can see it. I just took the green color that his head is. So take the, the color, whatever color you made your head, take that color and we're just gonna sew the nose on like that. Cause I didn't really want his nose to be that noticeable. So, take a bit of yarn, whatever, I don't know, bit of yarn, it doesn't take much. So, thread one side, the other end is just going to get a double knot. If you're using worsted weight, you probably don't have to do a double knot. This is not worsted, so I'm doing a double knot. So it doesn't matter where you go in, it just matters where you pop out. So I'm going to do it just in this magic ring <coughs> area. So I'm just going to come up in the center, just above the middle. You don't have to pull your knot through because you're going to tuck it down. And all I did was go in and out. I'm trying to keep it fairly straight. But I'm just trying... <clears throat> and go sideways too. I don't have to go up and down like I, I am doing. So I didn't want to go too far out of this circle. <clears throat> Excuse me, I don't know what's going on with my throat. But when I come back, I am absolutely trying to just keep it straight up and down. When I went the other way, it didn't really matter because it was just a base for what I was doing. So, But it's not supposed to be it's not supposed to be a noticeable nose. Which then you would say, well then why, why bother? Well, because I think the definition needs to be there. But at the same time, I don't think it needs to pop. I don't think it needs to be that noticeable. So, that's why. That's just me. I, I am not an artist by any means. I cannot draw. I cannot, you know. So, whatever kind of nose. I mean, if you have one of those kits that I have, they come with animal noses. So you can absolutely use one of those if you want to. So once you're satisfied with your nose, you can just go down as close as you can to your lead and you can just pop out wherever wherever it pops out and then we're going to tie a knot on this side to poke down and I'm going to tie a double knot Not sure why I can't get that down there. There we go. So just poke your your things inside the face. 
And don't worry about stretching that hole. When you start doing that, it'll all go back into shape. I do want to pull this up a bit. I kind of squished it down. There we go. So what I used for the eyes is a um, two-weight cotton yarn. Let me show you the white. Actually, the blue might be easier to see. This is all the same. I don't have a label. But it's just a, a small two-weight cotton yarn. It is awesome to work with. I actually embroider with this too because it's it's fabulous. I got it um, at Michael's. So for this I'm going to use a 3.5 hook. I don't know the letter. It will be up here on the screen or it probably already was. We are going to start. I've got the blue. I've got black. Which we're also doing the mouth with. And then I've got white. Oh, here's a label. Yay, I actually got a label. I turn all my balls into cakes. They don't come in cakes. I don't think they come in cakes. I did these myself. So that's what it is. I got it at Michael's. So it's actually only 52% cotton. 48% acrylic. Um, I think it says 4 millimeter. It is a two weight fine. I'm using a 3.5 so just so you know it's fabulous stuff I absolutely love working with it all right so let's do the mouth the mouth is pretty easy tie a double knot back here the knot on top of the knot that time. Okie dokie. So I am going to get a needle. An actual real life needle. Where my darning needle is. Anyway, get a needle of sorts. Whatever you want. Again, doesn't matter where you come in, just matters where you pop out. So I'm gonna put a big smiley face on this guy. So I'm gonna come way up here. Can you see that? I know, that's hard to see. I'm gonna come way up here. You don't have to pull your knot in, we're gonna poke it in, just like usual. So I'm gonna come across here. Try not to go into the stitch holes because then it's not gonna grab on anything. I'm going to come across here, so that's about one, two, th third line. I'm going to go in, and I'm going to come out somewhere in the middle. Possibly. I need a longer needle. So when I do that, it makes... A smiley face line up at the top of the mouth so from here I'm gonna come up I'm gonna go in almost underneath this if I can get underneath it a little bit and then I'm gonna shoot across preferably even to the other side where I want to make my smiley face So when I pull, it does that. So now I'm over here to do the other side. So I did one, two, three, trying to make it even, go down, pop out here, same place, That's the other part of the mouth, if I can get in there. Oh, I kind of snagged that mouth a little bit, but that's okay. So, that like that, and then come back up here. You're going to go down almost underneath that piece, and you're going to pop out wherever you pop out. It doesn't matter where you pop out. 
So when I pull, it's going to be like that. So that's my smiley face. And you don't have to make it tight or you don't have to pull tight on this or anything. So after you've got your face and you like your face, you can tie a knot. Sorry, I'll zoom back out. Tie a knot over here. A double one preferably since it's only a two weight. I didn't get my knot on top of my knot again. Anyway, so cut a bit off. But save some for after you poke it down. Boy, I'm struggling with poking this down today. There. Nope, oh, nope. I decided it uh, didn't want to poke all the way down. Oh, probably because I'm not poking it down the hole it's supposed to be down. Helps if you poke it down the hole it's actually coming out of. A little helpful. There. And then you can poke this guy down. So you're getting it right into that stuffing pretty good so there's my mouth so with that done we can move on to the eyes I need to get a light so you can see the black and what I'm doing all right so let's get started on these eyes I am using a secondary light because I find it very hard to see so, with your 3.5, you're going to make a magic ring, and you put six single crochets. So we're going to instantly switch colors here. So. Go through your first stitch. It's small, I know. I go through your first stitch and you're gonna pick up your blue. So pull through, make a stitch. You're going to have to pull down on this black to bring everything down and then you're going to have to weave in a little bit. So you're going to put two single crochets. Let's put a stitch marker. That's the first stitch. So we're going to put a second stitch in that same space because we're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around. This is awesome stuff to work with, but it's still slow going for me because I have fat fingers. <laughs> so two in each stitch. I should have six stitches, so you should have 12 stitches at the end of this. So it's 10. I got two more left. I'm going to cut the black off because I don't need it now. Two more stitches. Oh, I got some black in there. So I can pull your middle. 
Let me change it to white. Now let me turn this light off because I don't need it and it's just creating shadows. Sorry for the flashing. Oh, now I'm I think I'm I'm blinder. So we're gonna change to white. So I'll go into your first stitch after your stitch marker. Make a stitch. Pull your blue down. Pull your white tight. This will get a stitch marker because it's your first stitch. So we're going to do weird things here. So that's your first single crochet. Your next stitch is going to get weaving in the blue for a little bit. Your next stitch is going to get a single crochet. Your next stitch is going to get a single crochet. So three single crochets. Your next stitch is going to get two half double crochets in the same space. Oh, and I got stuck on something. Two half doubles. Your next stitch is going to get two half doubles. I'm still weaving in the blue, but I think this will be my last time. Two half doubles. Cut the blue off. Your next two stitches are going to put, get two double crochets each. Two double crochets each. Next two stitches. Next, oops. The next two stitches are going to get two half doubles. So we're just repeating what we did on the other side already. Oh. My white is not feeding. There we go. Get this blue out of here. Get this black out of here. And then single, single, single. So the last three stitches are just going to get a single crochet. And that is it for the eye. You can fasten off. So you can go into your next stitch. Do a slip stitch. Fasten off with a sewing tail. So all this crap in the back, I made sure that my black was pulled tight and then I literally made a knot with all of it. So this knot is not going to hinder anything as far as the how the eye sits on the face it will kind of look like it's puffed up a bit in that spot but that's okay because it kind of makes it look like it's 3d anyway so that's your eye so go ahead and make your second eye and I will meet you back here and we'll sew it on So I've got both my eyes done. <clears throat> so we just need to determine where we want them to be.
and also how you want them as far as the top of the whites. So this other guy that I did, I basically just put size underneath the antennas. So I think I'm just about going to do the same. Move him over a bit. So they're going to look like that. And hopefully in line with the mouth. So I'm going to sew on one with you. Well, part of one, anyway. And, um... But then, I mean, you can figure out how to sew the other one on by either taking my advice or... So, um, I do not want to come up the side like this. I want to actually stay in this area. So, I'm, first I'm going to go down, only because of this, where I fastened off. I'm going to go down into the doll. And I'm going to come up into the white. Whoops. I grabbed the end for the other eye. <laughs> wow. This is going to go well. So again, make sure everything's tucked under. I'm going to go down and come up into the white. And now I'm going to stay in the white. So when I sew around, I'm going to stay in the white part. I could probably change my needles. Or my... I think my sewing needle is a little large. The reason I'm doing this is because I don't want my, my thread to show on the outside. So I'm just going to go down into the doll. So if you have to do stitches, long stitches like this because of your needle is the same as mine, just too big, go behind your lead for your next stitch. And that will shorten up the, the gap anyway. So that's all you're going to do all the way around. So I'll meet you back here after we're all sewed on. Oh, there we go. I got my two rainbow caterpillars. These are super duper cute. And I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for joining, joining me. I'll see you in the next video.